Am I glitching out? Yep. Uh, well, your, your your video is, but I can hear you. Okay. We can hear you, but you're okay. not synced. Primarily critical of movies at an after party, this would be it. If you have not seen this film, we suggest that you do so before listening to any further. Because we've got spoilers, trivia, and opinions like crazy, and we cannot wait to share them. Good, bad, new, old, weird, or gross. We will pass judgment on them all. Hey. Humans want to be robots, and robots want to be humans. Today, my name is Steve, and I'm here with... Phil. And, and John. Uh, we're talking about Upgrade. The yes. uh, uh, 2018 um, movie. Uh, John, you picked this. Yeah. Take us through your I thought did. process. Well, uh, once again, uh, yeah, I got to give credit where credit is due. My wife found the, this for me. She said she watched some trailers of some movies. She said, I think you might like this one. And so she played the trailer for me, and I liked the trailer. And oh. ultimately, I, I liked the movie too. So, Good pick, John. I really enjoyed this movie. I saw this yeah. before you, uh, when it came out earlier, two years ago. And okay. I, I, I didn't appreciate it till the second viewing. I really, really, I enjoy futuristic movies to get in the, the to begin with, like, uh, you yeah. know, Terminator, Blade Runner, uh, Aliens. I enjoy, really enjoy that kind of stuff, sci-fi. Mm, Matrix. Yeah. Matrix is amazing to me. You guys reviewed yeah. that, I'm sure. Um, so this movie was really up there for me. Like, really. Really yeah. smart, gritty, well done, uh, edgy movie. And it was it was smart and well done. I, I enjoyed it very, I very agree. much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it, it's, it was, like, you know, I love a, a good sci-fi. It has to be plausible, right? That's one of the things that's, like, essential to it, that the science has to feel like it's not, like, totally ridiculous, you know. Um, I mean, it's pretty far advanced from where we're at today, but uh, not yeah. unbelievable, you know? But that's a good question, John uh, and Steve. What year is this supposed to be uh, taking place? That Does is anyone a good know? Question. I don't because think they ever said it in the movie. I don't think they ever said it. No. It's pretty we far. It's futuristic. We know it's futuristic. 50 years? Then, like the kind of time frame? Because it seemed really, no, but really. They make it clear. They do that very early in the movie to make sure, like, the movie starts with their in a car that's futuristic, right? So. They start off the way of the hop saying, this is not today, this is down the road, which I think well, was important, you know. <laughs> well, they, they, they start the movie, the, the very, very beginning, where uh, Buddy uh, Gray is, is fixing up his firebird. Uh, oh, yes, and and yeah. he's in his garage, and we see all the old junk, and, and, uh, and we think, oh, it's just modern day, doody, doody, do. And then his wife pulls up in, in, a, in a driverless yes. car, right? <laughs> yeah yeah so uh yeah um our main guy our our main our hero of the movie gray yeah he's an analog guy and he's he's yeah. out of place in this time everything is augmented everything is, is virtual in this future uh yeah. and the cliche happens for me and that, that you know one knock against this movie in every movie i've seen about automated cars uh they, they always get hacked and they always yeah. are <laughs> It has happened yeah. a few times now in movies. So at the beginning of the movie, we're led to believe this car is crashes, and it's a great <laughs> twist at the very end of the movie that we learn that he was in fact the person that they were targeting. Yeah, the, and yeah. you don't know about that. So very, that's one of the cool, yeah. smart things about this movie, right? It was smart because I assumed it had to do with her job, right? Like I, I'm, just, I'm assuming all viewers thought it had to do with her job or something to do because she was in the industry of technology and and yeah. you know this is just he just strikes us as a simple guy that just like to fix up old cars no one's gonna be interested in him right but they, they made the point he has no cyber enhancements he's a perfect yeah. candidate for uh this enhancement he had to be clear clean 
he had to be organic. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love it. He was organic. totally like, so, so you got to think the main character gray had some knowledge of the analog days or the, our times, like, you know, where we still had a respect for, for old technology, old cars. Yeah. So I, I, I dug his, his character in such an interesting well, yeah. thing. No, I, that Firebird. I love that Firebird because it looks exactly like the Hot Wheels Firebird. I don't know if you guys had the hot, like if you guys collected Hot Wheels back in the day. Uh, was but, that like the Smokey and the Bandit model? Like I think so, Firebird right? Bird like, on the on the hood. On the hood, yeah, yeah. But the Hot Wheels one I, was black, just like that. It was it was like a spinning image. It was just ah. <laughs> oh beautiful piece of machinery <laughs> he doesn't it. drive that one though he he drives the dodge charger yeah, yeah. that's true yeah. that wasn't his car that was he's his got, job he's got, right he's got two muscle cars <laughs> well the, yeah the, the the when he 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 delivers the car at the beginning of the movie right to the to the, the oh yeah. yeah to the the elon musk type character right he's a totally <laughs> he's he's and and the cool thing too you thought for a while he's the villain and then it switches yeah. to the fact that it's in 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 the end we got to talk about stem it's stem yeah, yeah. the whole yeah. time he the becomes self aware and he manipulates everybody and pushes things yeah. in in motion to have the end result that he get um gray's body <laughs> and damn it the coldest thing that doesn't happen in a lot of these movies it leaves you like he gets away with it yeah uh, that's how the movie ends to get ahead yeah. I gotta wonder, in. like yeah. right at the beginning, um, was it smart of Stem? Because he's spoiler alert, he's supposed to have planned the whole thing, right? So, yeah. yeah. So is it smart of Stem at the very beginning for uh for that dude, Aaron, um, to say this chip can do anything <laughs> or everything, right? This chip can do everything but mm -hmm. at that point well for all we know stem is telling him right in his ear to say this yeah yeah because because uh yeah what's his face uh their elon musk character i don't even know what his name is sorry he is always has the inner peace telling him stem was directing him yeah right to deal with the gray oh but you're saying is that smart like with is that kind of like ah uh, wait, wait elaborate your point steve i maybe i'm missing it um no, maybe it's, it's the character's name was Jeff Henley. Um, um, okay, so if Stem planned this whole thing, why would he reveal himself at the beginning? Right, that, that's the question. Mm. Right. Because nobody would believe it? I don't know. They, they, but it, 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 even we, we were being told at the beginning, this is how it's going to be, and we just go along for the ride. Yeah. It, it's a great, it's a fun ride. But uh, you're right. I mean, but okay. What we know is that uh, at that point, Aaron is trying to convince uh, Gray to take this chip. Yeah. Right. That that's the whole point of that conversation is trying to to get the idea into Gray's head that I'm gonna want this chip. I can. But you're right. Did he need to say it can make you do every anything or whatever? Yeah. He could have said it can make you walk again. It can make you, you know. Uh, it's kind of like playing the whole hand, is which I think what you're saying, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't. Here, here's another thing too. Why did why did the stem need to go through all the time with uh, Gray in action? Why he could have just went right to what he needed to do. Which I, what is he trying to convince? He's trying to convince people that uh, now we got a person that's healed, or is it? What was his mission at the end of it all? He got what well, he wanted. Yeah, he got what he wanted, but um, I don't. I I think there was a, it was a learning process for him. Kid. Like there was a couple of times where STEM needed needed help, right? There was a couple of times where um, Gray saved his bacon, right? Yeah, and, and and there's a telling part, right? There's rival companies that have technology, and STEM is like really cutting edge. Everybody's got enhancements. In fact, the yeah. rival companies got a, a a team going after him with that one smarmy guy, which was a great bad that guy, right? The, the military guy with the guns yeah. and the arm, and uh, so reminiscent of what's his face from uh, Matrix, like yeah, hey, oh yeah, right, uh, Mr. Yeah, Smith, I, Mr. I, Smith, I, yeah. I made a note 
it's good to see that in the future, I guess in the future, smarmy guys still have mustaches. He's got that <laughs> mustache yeah. and he's like that totally like cocky bad guy from like Die Hard, you know, like just arrogant. Anyways, uh, I lost the point where we were talking about it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I get it. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Here's a good question. Uh, did did Greg get his happy ending? Oh, well, he's put it into a virtual world, right? Where he thinks he's got his ending. He wakes up like he did yeah. before, but things are okay. The yeah, wife didn't So basically, die. the way I, I kind of took that is that he, he basically woke up in, like, the Matrix, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's yeah. in a... Nothing he, that's real, but is, for, for all intents and purposes, as far as Gray's concerned, that's reality, and that's where he is. And yeah. so, yeah, he got to happy. He can walk again. He's, his life is great. He, you know, he's, as long as he never finds out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's where that's where the sequel will go. You know, <laughs> I want there to be a sequel because I think Gray is now in his happy place or whatever. He's in the Matrix. He totally yeah. is in the Matrix because, uh, as Stem said, he he split his mind. It crashed, and he he, he Stem finally got him to crash. He said there was a telling part in the boat halfway through the movie where Stem gets hacked by that that uh, unidentified person. She doesn't want to be he or she or whatever. She's off the grid kind of thing, like the Matrix. She's like the oh, Matrix. Oh, Jamie. She's out of the Matrix kind of thing, right? She's right. not plugged in. She, but she knows what's going on. And she tells uh, uh, Gray, you know, you got to stop them or something. So to me, if Gray we ever can't wanted- let them win. But Stem yeah. knew that Stem was ahead of the game, and he he got yes. what he needed. He needed to separate his whatever to make ties it from Aaron. Yeah, he, he basically needed to be. Well, it wasn't just ties from Aaron; it was ties from the corporation, uh, or ties from what's his face from Gray. That from was the Gray. other thing because Gray was the way Stem. The way I understand it, Stem was programmed that uh, Gray would still be in charge of Stem. Aaron also oh. would have been in charge of STEM. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're being but, tracked and all that by the corporation and all that, whatever. But when the hacker, uh, so Gray goes along with it going, yes, I don't want uh, Aaron to be able to track me and know what's going on. So he goes as hacker. But what Gray didn't, uh, didn't realize is that by doing this, that also released Gray's control over STEM, right? Yeah. Both things happen simultaneously, right? Yeah. So, it's, so it's Gray a, lost his control over STEM in that moment when that hacker did that, right? Yeah. That's my understanding. It's a smart movie. And it's and man, on that note, wasn't it wasn't a very it, it was a really graphically violent movie when when Stem took over Gray's body and went to town, he was like a ninja <laughs> yeah. at one point. But then Stem I let, there's a bit of comic relief. Uh Stem says, "I'm not a ninja, <laughs> but you know, I have limitations." Because he's he gets into that uh, bathroom fight scene, and like yeah. he's like really risking himself. And I love I love how he's paralyzed. And if he doesn't have Stem, he's dead meat. He's just a, yeah. a husk. He's just yeah. I love that angle about this movie. A paralyzed guy, and in the possibilities that the Stem actually did what this movie says it's doing. Is, is awesome to think this could be like the future, but this also could be the future. Your body gets taken over. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. It's so, yeah. so different. This movie is so different from a lot of movies out there. It's, it's kind of like part, part Robocop meets the matrix part, you know? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Great, great sci-fi movie. Great action movie. Like it was just when he yeah. went to start, that one scene where he ripped that guy's face in half near this is what that yeah 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 it's yeah. yeah. all the way oh, up to, to each year just yeah. like, and the guy is like no control and he's like he's he's like guilty about it but he didn't do it like he's like yeah. please you know stem don't kill the next guy yeah <laughs> i always love though how when computers control a human body somehow the human body has this amazing ability to defy gravity and go stand up straight from like you know, without, it's oh. like, how does that happen? Yeah. You know, it's like, you're not only controlling the human body, but you're actually controlling physics of the universe oh. to oh. make this oh. body, you know, it, it, unbelievable, I, you know? <laughs> well, I think I, they're just trying to, to spell out that oh, we haven't really reached our, our full potential. 
Yeah, maybe, but I hear what you're saying, uh, John. It's like basically to get that kind of body control, athleticism, to do what STEM is telling Gray to do, it would take years yeah. of training and conditioning and muscle. Uh, and all of a sudden, he's like, he's like super. He would, after doing that fight scene, he'd be spent. He'd be probably all yeah. broken up and like bruised, but he oh, yeah. got the fight done or whatever. But <laughs> it <laughs> made him right. superhuman. So um, during the movie, uh, there are uh, Gray has flashes of his dead wife. Um, and yeah, 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 and uh, and you would think that okay, so that's that's uh, that's stem, right? He's he's feeding this to him. Um, and, and, so. and he's getting him ready for the end of the for his end game, but there he has flashes of his wife when uh, when Stem is shut down in the hacker's warehouse. Oh, good point. So I think there's something going on. Well, what's what's? It's the analog coming is. back. The analog coming back. Well, and we'll never really know, right? We'll know. We won't know what's because what's Stem and what's him, right? Because they're integrated so closely uh, yeah as his wife was into tech too she was like in the same kind of industry or research or whatever was going on right with ai and and maybe she knew something too maybe she had like a uh uh something could leave in in gray that we don't know about that says yeah. hey i'll help you through this for the sequel whatever you know like yeah we're gonna beat stem in the sequel so. Yeah, I really hope there is a sequel to this movie because oh, I, yeah. I totally. Really? This is one of the I, I think most the original movie. sci-fi movies since The Matrix to me, like really good. Yeah, like, yeah. I really like this movie, but I feel like it's it's good. It's it's just fine the way it is. You, you, you know? just, you're ready to package it up and just leave it and don't ruin it with something that's, that's beyond. Right. Yeah, because but, but um, the idea. Let's just go with the simple idea of a microchip named Stem that yeah. uh, you know can do what STEM does. Does does this not seem like something that's going to, if that technology ever existed, yeah, it's just going to be a, a problem for humanity over and over and over and over again, right? I mean, if that actually happened. Well, when yeah. You're talking the, AI, basically. Well, let's, yeah. I mean, you're talking about, we could call it AI, but we could call it, basically, let's go with what the movie is. It's a microchip that you can plant in that gives you all this stuff. Once that technology exists, if it really happened in our in our light, like, well, not in our life, well, whatever, on Earth here, in reality, yeah, there would be a million movies you could write about that technology because this is just one saga of a microchip that can do that, right? I mean, it seems like that's the beginning of a, you know, this this this, this is sci-fi new world. Uh, look, this is kind of movie where like cyborg. Uh, <laughs> There's been different movies like this where you get enhanced, right? Yeah. Um, Robocop or, or, you know, it's been around. And to me, it, it's fun. Because, like, wasn't that the cool, one of the coolest things that guy was weaponized at, the, the, the bad guy, yeah. was the yeah. mustache guy? He sneezes and he's got, like, micro bots go into the guy's yeah. nose <laughs> and kill his him. brain. And like, yeah. whoa, man, we're we're headed. I totally believe we're headed for a world where we could have enhancements. Maybe not like that yet, but all sorts of enhancements to your body someday. Mm -hmm. And and uh, why not? Hey, let's not kid yourselves, man. This vaccine, I, I'm just reading up on it today. It's actually going to work in a whole way. Vaccines have never worked before and that's where uh for the covid vaccine just in case this is historical and someone's watching this but anyways uh yeah for the covid vaccine it's gonna use messenger rna uh um, to do the work so it mean meaning it's gonna get your body to synthesize the antibodies it's not putting antibodies into your body it's making your body synthesize antibodies wow now think Crazy. about that uh hey. that's a technology that People thought was the, the the idea's been there for a long time, but it's actually happening because of this. So, uh, so the you, possibilities you, go really far if you read more about it. Then. Oh boy, don't be a conspiracy theory. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> no, no. Hey, it's listen, I, I've I've taken I, I'm third year of uh, uh, university of science student, and, and I, I know a lot of this stuff. And, and yes, um, the, the, you trust it's amazing vaccines? stuff. Are, are, you know, the, I'll the, take the, it. 
The bottom yeah. line is, are you going to take the vaccine when it's available? I'll be the first in line. I will too. 100%. Yeah, I will 100% do it. because I, uh, that's why I want to read get this. Out of this. I want to read this. The science is sound and I like it. I love it. Uh, I know, but I'm just saying what but, people do with it going forward is, 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 is it'll be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, but you, yeah. but you do know for every one of us that says we're going to take it, there could, there's, I don't know, there's going to be a lot of people that won't. They're scared. They're scared because of movies and conspiracy theories and, and all yeah. that, right? Anyways, I, have, I, have faith, I have faith in humanity. We're getting I, off topic too. here. Well, we're gonna yeah. see. We're gonna see it just fine. Yeah. Um. Uh, the coroner is surprised about augmentation. Yeah. Okay. So we do get a glimpse of the coroner taking apart one of the bad guys, and he's like, "Check this out. This guy's got a gun in his arm, and yeah. he's got these wires in his chest. I've never seen this before." And uh, and uh, also, um. Stim is not in a big hurry to see another one of those chips made. So, yes. uh, so I mean, the, yeah, that's why he gets rid of uh, uh, what Aaron is it the the, the... yeah I, I just I feel like yeah. um, the the movie is is dealing with like bleeding edge uh, technology at that time, right? Yeah, and it, and it's very close. It's that's why I think it's like 50 years in the future, maybe even sooner. But yeah. I, the whole, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I like that. I like movies to see how people predict the future. And, the, and this movie had a real f- a g- good look to it, right? A gritty, like for the, whatever budget it had. I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean. But, uh, let's go back to what you're saying, Steve. Is that it's, it's like STEM wants to be the only one, right? Yeah, he wants to be the only one. Right, so yeah, which is, which is interesting, which means he doesn't want competition, right? And uh, and he's also contained himself. Well, maybe he hasn't contained himself because he can still control all kinds of stuff on the internet. Yeah, um, he's got a body that I think he's the, got a the, body. The One, thing, he's got a body that he's got, and I don't think the previous technology that we're going to call him Mr. Smith because I don't know his name, but the the that guy, um, he he didn't have whatever was those were all enhancements but whatever was there did not have complete control of him it was he was still in control of his enhancements that's why this chip was the game changer this chip was exactly stem is the first of that he finally got control of a human body so he's got complete and 100 percent control and this is the first enhancement that did that that you know i'm a actual superhuman being uh and i've got complete control so because you think about it we've got ai right now and what one could argue ai right now good there's a good chance ai is in our internet right uh oh, well, because the- ai exists on computers right we do we they they try to <clears throat> put some elements in a robot but pretty much it's contained yeah. into computers if it's on the internet right now we don't know if all this stuff, all these conspiracy theories and stuff is being fueled by AI, we actually don't know, right? I mean, it's uh, hard. Just, you, you start sending out the right messages to the right people. You go, <laughs> oh, this person thinks like that. I'm going to put this uh, little feed on for them to think that. If you can start, AI can start being playing with humans, right, at this point, but they don't have a body. We know that for sure right now. In this day and age, they don't have a body. They don't right? have a body. But, right. I don't think they're there body, yet, God. I don't think we're there yet. I think it's algorithms controlled by humans that are really tweaking. Well, Stephen Hawkins is worried about it. Yeah. He said that one of the biggest concerns for humanity is yeah. AI. Okay. Um, uh, he was worried about it. And I was, um, I was researching um, uh, robots because uh, I want one. And, uh, <laughs> and they have Spot. Have you ever heard of Spot? Uh, Boston, Dy- Boston Dynamics is selling a dog. Uh, a robot dog by the name of Spot, and, uh, uh-huh. and you pay twenty five thousand. What is it? Maybe it's seventy five. Seventy five thousand um, dollars, and and this robot can uh, follow you. It can carry things. It can uh, it can you can program it to go somewhere and come back. And it's got yeah. and, and uh, it it's advertised as being an extremely rough terrain. Yeah, uh, 
a robot, right? This, Amazing, this yeah. Four-legged I, Boston I, Dynamic dog has done crazy cool things. I, I think I know what you're talking about. They're, I've seen just recently they, they got a, in Japan as a robot that will go into retail stores and be like the human equivalent of like a, a, a somebody comes up to you, can I help you find your clothes? And it will just tell you everything you need to know without interacting with the human. And you can go into a store and you get help from the robot. And it'll go move around the store with you and stuff. That's kind of the automation I guess we're going towards. But that's a robot. And what yeah. I think John's saying, what, at what point, uh, I think with with respect to AI, when it becomes sent, sentient, sentient, when it thinks on its own and separates yeah. from the human race, it's like the Terminator. It's on. They're going to take control <laughs> of everything that the AI. humans have as weapons and turn them against us, just like the Terminator. That's my uh, view of AI. Well, there's this, I mean, this, this it always knows the humans are the threat. There's a philosophical debate here is that, why do is it complete human projection that we that they would want power control all that stuff because these are things that you could say are inherent to humans right why why does a a thing that apparently has no emotions um doesn't have a a spirit a soul whatever why does it even want anything like what what motivation Motives, it's, right? But it's programmed yeah. by are, humans. Are driven by emotion and, and yeah, and but it's it's governed so, by the human laws and human emo, uh, humans. So it, so it it sees humans as a threat because can't you take yeah, but that's projecting. You're saying this as as a threat. Okay, why would it a uh, machine? Why would it care? Threat? Yeah, why I, would it I, care? I hear I hear you. Okay, but th- this is this is sci-fi talk. I love it. I could talk about this forever. Well, yeah. I mean, it could be like you know, I think I hear what you're saying. If a machine becomes sent- sentient and has its own uh, uh, thought and and is free, uh, then yeah. it'd be like the Matrix, where you keep humans as servants to keep the machine running because <laughs> it doesn't have a body, like you're saying. But when that once movie, again it gives gets us- a body, so it could live amongst us and coexist. Well, uh, There's the, so many levels to it, but it, we, we also you might be projecting the idea of wanting to survive. Um, that's that's also a, a based on a fear thing, right? Like you know, um, but you're talking about a machine. Does it want to survive? Does it even care if it survives? I mean, these are the things we always, as humans, we project. Once we see something act like a human, we think we, like we, you- we personify it. We say, "Oh, it has a personality." Yeah, but maybe in reality it doesn't want a, it's a cold thing. It doesn't it's even care if you machine. blow, you go up with a shotgun and blow its brains out. It doesn't care because it really doesn't have those feelings. That but humans can't seem to look at that technology without projecting that stuff. We do that onto all the time, it, you know. Yeah. Right, Steve? What do you? What are your thoughts, man? It's a heavy top, a topic. I love it, but keep talking. Uh, the Matrix. Um, in the in the Matrix, the robots. Uh, are, are I think as a, a, a robot accidentally killed a human, and um, and then that robot was executed, and then the other robots decided, oh, uh, well, I guess we need a place, right? So they they said, well, we're going to form a city, and they called it one, and uh, and and they lived in that city, and they and then they they tried to share the earth, and at some point there was a big war, and. Uh, and and yeah, I, I I like what John's saying. Like, what what's the motive of these robots? Uh, like, uh, I mean, that that's I, it. I, I guess for the purposes of this movie, STEM is based on a human human, and I guess it knows humans and to, to live amongst them. You guess it had to get a human. It has to coexist. So it's like a symbiote, right? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like uh, Venom was in Spider Man, or you know what I'm talking about, where yeah, I, I've I've seen the, I've I've heard that uh, people have made parallels between uh, Venom and Venom and Upgrade. Yeah, yeah, and I mean we could talk about it forever, but maybe we should move on to trivia. Yeah, we're we're running lower on time. Uh, right. Maybe maybe we we're running uh, less than ten minutes. Um, during the fight scenes, the camera often tracks Gray. So that he remains in the middle of the frame. I, I kind of dug that. That was a nice style. According to the director Lee uh, Wanell, 
This was achieved by hiding a phone somewhere on actor Logan Marshall Green, where the cameras could then be pair with the which the cameras could then pair to and uh, follow with uh, much accurate as much accuracy so, as possible. So it was like a tracking device. It's like the cameras were like follow that phone wherever he go, wherever it goes. Right? That's yeah. crazy. I've I've never even heard of that software. Yeah, you know what? Uh, this movie was sharp, man. It was like the cinematography was great and the look of it. So yeah, I dug I dug it all. It was so good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, what one of the things that's just standing out of me that I, it's I meant uh, to say earlier in the movie is that is this correct, Steve? The budget was only three million dollars. Looks like it. Yeah. That's what, uh, it, if that's true, that's crazy because this this doesn't look that's this looks crazy. Like a, this looks like a really big end production movie. Like, I know, like you you compare this to the Matrix. Uh, I don't know what the budget of the Matrix is, but I guarantee you it was a hell of a lot more than three million dollars. That's probably Keanu Reeves probably got more than. Uh, Three million for that movie, Maybe. right? I so. don't know that the major well, had was, no was name that? actors, and and yeah. uh, and I guess uh, most of the budget went to building those fancy schmancy cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean that that rich guy's house is is a hole in the ground, so they just yeah you get the stairs going down, and then they and then they go and film somewhere else. But it else. didn't feel it didn't feel like they cut corners. You know, yeah. which is no, weird, it, right? Like it, it was made it for smart. a three million dollar budget. I felt yeah. like this was right there with you know. Hey, that's great because I have yeah. thought. We only have so much time, but I have thoughts about like the whole COVID uh, going forward, making movies. Can you think big late A list stars going to command that kind of money they're holding down that they nor are comfortable getting all the time? I don't think so. Movies, yeah. they're gonna everybody's gonna have to take pay cuts. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. let's keep moving on with trivia. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll take the next one. At one point during the hacker building sequence, the Saw 2004 doll can be seen painted on one of the walls. Lee Wannell, Wannell? I don't know. Uh, the director for this movie also wrote the first Saw 2004 feature film screenplay. So there you <laughs> go. We got to a, a tie a writer to Saw and uh, he threw in his, uh, yeah, threw she's his doll. Having fun. That's awesome. Or she? Sorry. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, I, the film has drawn a lot of comparisons to a, another 2018 film, Venom, which we talked about. Uh, but Lee Wheeling, we, well, now I think you, it's Winnell. Sorry, man, we're butchering your name. Said he was not familiar with the comic book character before writing the film. Inter interestingly, the lead actors of both films. Logan Marshall Green and Tom Hardy bear a striking, striking resemblance to each other. I totally agree. Doesn't that, <laughs> the lead in this movie and Tom Hardy and, and Venom looked like the same guy? It's like they could. I couldn't get Tom Hardy. Well, let's get Logan. <laughs> he's cheaper. <laughs> he's cheaper. He's the, cheaper. Uh, I think yeah. they, they, all the actors did very very well. Oh yeah, I, I'm very impressed with this movie. The more I, I think about it. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow, I think this is a, might be a a directing debut for because uh, he acted in Saw. Uh, oh. Lee, the director. Wait, you're talking about Lee? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Oh, well, uh, the, a, the, he, and it is a man. It is a man. Just okay. To, so, sorry, you guys keep talking. I'll I'll, I'll find more information over here. <laughs> the word stem uh, means voice in Dutch. Now I'm not sure how uh, deliberate that was, but uh, it's kind of cool. I like that. Um, uh, Phil, you were talking about um, making movies going forward, and man, I just saw this documentary or not documentary. Um, Oprah Winfrey was in interviewing uh, Barack Obama. And and they they set it up two completely separate studios and using camera tricks they made it look like they were in the same room talking to each other across two wow. chairs and and they they what they showed you how they built it they took the chair they took the green screen they took another chair with a, with another green screen and they set up a camera here set up a camera there so that. Uh, Barack Obama was looking at a at a screen that was placed where Oprah Winfrey's 
it would be. have been, and it's in the just, room. Yeah. yeah, it's just crazy the amount of that's crazy. I, I've 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 heard this and kind of seen this. I've heard about it, and it's augmented reality kind of deal, right? Like, yeah. it's live, and they're not in the same room, but it appears to us like they're together talking to you. It's, yeah. yeah, we're we're there, man. Technology, <laughs> man. Okay, uh, just to let you guys know about Lee Wenell. Wait, Wenell? Is that what we're going with? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, he, he's directed. Uh, in, he, he's his directorial debut was uh, Insidious Chapter Three in 2015. So he's a relatively new director, and uh, and then his so Upgrade was his second movie oh. he directed. I, I, uh, I, I and, but in 2020 this year uh, he did The Invisible Man. Which I've actually seen. So, well, we just watched. We just we watched did that. One. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did it. There you go. So, so here that this guy is great. I can't like Invisible Man was great. I I can't wait to see what he keeps doing. Like, yeah, this guy's this guy's on his way up. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I just want to quickly. Oh, he glitched oh, out. Oh my god, Phil! What happened? Oh, this is. This this is how it is like now. You get to experience what we get, get to see with you there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's what it's like when I do that. That's yeah, that's what it's like. Yeah, there you go. Huh. So we got to, but what we've learned is we got to keep talking about the movie here because yeah, uh, so we're, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Right, what, what was the last? Uh, did we do all trivia points? No, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, oh, we we're did. done. We're done all the trivia. Uh, next week, Monday at noon, we're going to cover Joker. That was my pick, and I picked it simply because I hadn't seen it, and it's on my watch list. Um, oh, Phil oh, left wow. left the show. Wow. Oh, that's going to uh, screw up everything. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Oh. I will figure it out. I'll put a little a little X there. Well, if, Phil, if he if he could just join back, then we could just redo what we just said. But we only have two minutes. We have two minutes. <laughs> we have two minutes. We got to come on, down. Bill. Get back. <laughs> um, I have. I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next Monday at noon. Uh, yes. Be there. Be square. Um, PrimaryTheCritical.com. We got a store. We got everything. Um, bye bye. Bye bye.